Hello, everybody. <clears throat> um, I hope this is one of the most important discussions that uh, you will ever hear about wildlife, and particularly about life uh, in the universe and how uh, it may be connected to the jungle um, fundamentally. So uh, this is a very big topic, uh, and I've been looking at it, uh, hopefully in some detail here. Um, basically, uh, what happened is that uh, you know, I, I've been studying the North Pole and the South Pole, um, and it's fundamentally uh, true that the uh, galaxy basically is a flat disk, um, that primarily most of the activity is around the equator of the galaxy, and that happens universally. So basically most things uh, in the universe, uh, most of the life and most of the activity is equator based. So that's also true uh, on our planet um, in terms of uh, biodiversity here. You can see um, here in Southeast Asia, uh, this zone in here, and actually a lot of the population uh, being in India and China as well. Um, but, uh, uh, so yeah, so basically, uh, we wanted to think about some really practical stuff tonight, um, but certainly the astrophysics, uh, and the, uh, spiritual side of the conversation is super important as well. So, um, I just wanted to emphasize, um, that uh, no matter what way we look at this, uh, there's a lot of different perspectives. Um, and it was very hard for me to get into some of these details um, in terms of how uh, the jungle works. So there's a lot of stuff uh, to discuss here um, in terms of as we zoom in and actually look at uh, these details together. So. Um, so we have like hundreds or even thousands of things to discuss here um, tonight. So it's kind of a huge topic. Um, and uh, I just wanted to uh, look at the details here um, because they're super important because essentially the population of our planet um, is starting to get, I mean, it has been for quite some time um, taking over a lot of the wildlife lands. So we're going to look at defining precisely what's happening uh, and look at the areas that are most important. So we're primarily going to talk about the Congo, um, but most of the other stuff that we're going to talk about, maybe in a separate discussion, will be about the Amazon. Um, and you can see that the biodiversity actually is quite more significant in the Amazon, but that has not always been the case. Um, and in fact, this map may have been much redder in the past in terms of biodiversity. Each one of these dots represent about 1,209 different species um, of animals. And that's not including the, uh, the actual plants and some other details like that. So this map shows the climate map and you can kind of see some details here about how uh, complicated the climate is. Um, and it's not just uh, maybe what you think the jungle may be. So there's certainly um, some seconds over here in West Africa. Um, and then there's the coastal region here, the centerpiece here, and then there's East Africa. And then there's definitely a, a whole range of climate along in this range. And then also, we shouldn't certainly forget Madagascar as well in this discussion, and then all the way down to South Africa um, and other areas. So, uh, and then certainly North Africa could also be part of the discussion. So I'm gonna show you everything really quickly here, and we're just gonna talk about it as quickly as possible because some of these discussions have gotten way out of bounds in terms of time frame, um, and it's really hard to pay attention because there's just, millions of details um, and all these things are going on here so it's a, certainly a very complicated discussion um, so here is kind of a map showing uh, the major satellite region of the Congo jungle we'll go into detail on that you can see uh, here and this does not show the far western part of Africa like we were seeing here this shows the far western portion as well as this portion in here and how the 
wildlife may have moved from time to time back into the jungle. So uh, although there are, there should be more wildlife in Western Africa, there is not. So kind of a discussion on that. Um, and then looking at the opposite side of Africa, basically Madagascar uh, being very unpopulated and looking at how that may relate to Ethiopia, Uganda being a very important part and these great lakes of Africa and how animals and wildlife may move up the coast along Africa there. And then here's kind of the overview again. So you can see this a very important piece here, this extremely important piece here and then kind of a sliver of land here. Now the Congo River itself actually goes through here on the south side and believe it or not, the climate uh, that's necessary is actually a little bit more on the north side of the jungle and then actually this green part being the most, one of the most important parts because it's kind of the back end of the jungle. Um, however, the population definitely pushing here and then some new pathways to look at of how the migration may actually work. Uh, for the wildlife. So uh, there's definitely uh, some questions here about farming that we wanted to look at, particularly in West Africa and Ethiopia, and how some new areas of farming we can maybe look at down in here rather than opposed to just farming directly in the jungle um, and kind of taking a careful look at some very important parts of the jungle. Now, one thing I'd remind you is that it's not just the super green areas, there's biodiversity, so different land areas matter quite a bit. Here's a zoom in so you can see those particular lakes that might be super important. This this whiter area here is actually a very large city. There's two cities here, both of populations of many millions of people. Um, and we're gonna look at all those details in a moment. Um, we're also gonna discuss some of the basins here. This is the water basin for the Congo. So originally when the lines of the countries were drawn, they were not drawn based on water at all. So this is a whole new way of redefining how we look at the jungle area. And you can see essentially what 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 happens here is the this basin line becomes the highway or super highway for the wildlife so what i was very i was listening to monkey videos for hours i even fell asleep listening to monkey videos about what's going on in the jungle and i was very interested at what was going on in the jungle and it's interesting because monkeys actually don't live where you would think they live they actually live on the outskirts uh, a large part on the northern side here and they are afraid to cross the river so in fact their habitats are extremely small because they don't even go into their knees they're afraid to get more than their knees wet in the water so actually over th hundreds of years or even thousands of years a lot of the wildlife does not cross these rivers so what happens is that this line if you look at it carefully it's around the perimeter of all the rivers so animals that want to change from one habitat to another have to go out to this green line essentially because they can't cross the river and um, so this becomes a very important pathway and we're going to look at some central pieces of that river as well as the delta in here and this happens to be the nile river uh, which is one of the longest rivers in the world and it's a very important thing to think about as well as these floodplains so we're going to try to look at rivers as carefully as possible and i probably will not discuss that enough but here's another map zoomed in showing particular branches of the river as well as those two big lakes in the middle as well as some new ideas for creating a bridge here for the wildlife because certain rivers may actually cause problems uh, for the wildlife uh, because they can't cross it and they need to go into areas where humans are. Now here's an overall river map of Africa and I didn't label this one so you can primarily study it yourself and look at the details. We're gonna look at all this population stuff. This is a spent um, I don't even want to tell you how much time I spent looking at all this stuff. Um, not enough, but hours and hours. And basically, you can start to see what's going on here. This major city, and I didn't highlight it enough, and I'll put a black circle around it, but basically, this guy right here is a multi-million city, and it's basically right in the jungle. And it basically springs out all this other population. And you can kind of see that it's not just that city that's responsible, but also this city down here in Angola. So you can see their population basically fanning out into the jungle. And even 
the whole Congo, the whole length, this is the Congo, the main part of the Congo branch spirals all the way down into here. And there's basically people all around there. And actually there's a whole flood of people getting ready to get right into the jungle. And you can see some pathways as well there. So we're going to try to look at that. Now this is a more detailed study looking at the farmland. So it's not just, you can see that this farmland map is actually even more significant. You can see major farmland right in the jungle, right in here. And actually on both sides of the river, you can see this is the Congo River. They've actually crossed the Congo River gone into the main part of the jungle and even gone deeper and there's even farms right in here in this blue region which is basically the greenest part of the jungle farmland coming in there you can kind of see how this all uh, works in terms of different pathways that people have been using uh, to get in the jungle and again this is the deforestation looking even worse in some respects you can see definitely deforestation deep into the jungle here and all around here and basically the responsibility for that uh although it may seem like it's from these guys it's actually perhaps from rwanda side uh, and what i wanted to emphasize here is that a lot of people may get lost right like if you're living in rwanda there's like a major war going on uh, and also the Congo War, uh, you may think, hey, my life's going to get better if I move into the jungle further. Like it, in the United States, a lot of people say, hey, I'm going to move out into the middle of nowhere and that's going to be the savior for me. But the actual truth is that the standard of living is far higher in major cities and also along the coastline. Uh, for example, most of the major cities around the world name the city. Uh, whether it's uh, you know anywhere in the world pretty much has ocean access so a lot of these inland cities maybe should not exist even um, and should be much smaller and much higher density and there so the, this is basically showing the deforestation so what this doesn't explain is the northern part and we're going to discuss how Nigeria is actually influencing some of that problem here as well as Kampala and this basically all spins out Back in here is, and I don't want to say Kenya is not involved in this, this is Nairobi, but you can see this actually comes through Nairobi, but definitely Kampala can play a major role in preventing this deforestation. And probably a lot of people in Kampala understand the jungle better. I mean, this is only a few hundred miles from pretty deep into the jungle. So um, Basically, the proposal here is to get all of this out of here and move this more into the Kenya side. So that's why Kenya becomes so important here, uh, particularly this green city here. Um, and looking at how we can, uh, and this is Tanzania. So basically, there's a border region here where Kenya is this part, Uganda is this part, and Tanzania is this. And actually, Tanzania has all the south part. And the problem right now is that this is a national park called the Serengeti National Park. It's one of the biggest open ranges in the world. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's just so much wildlife here but actually that wildlife has probably been kicked out from this section here which is completely populated if you look at here it doesn't even explain the degree to which the population has taken the wildlife lands here um, and what i wanted to mention okay so the soil map is also extremely important because that goes back into the farming so when we're looking at the farming map uh, and the soil map, here's the farming map here, the soil map, there are alternatives to necessarily farming right in here uh, because a lot of that and a lot of this diversity right around, uh, you can see Rwanda here, this whole south, this southeast side maybe can be farmed rather than this. And there's basically no hope right now in some senses, uh, you know, unless we really start changing things. And you can see even this, there's an opportunity right along the coast. And why live right in the jungle when you can actually probably have better property and live a nicer life right on the ocean front? Um, and the actually one of the wealthiest places in all of Africa is Zanzibar, these islands right here. And so why not just live in a more wealthy place as well as these islands off of the coast here? So there's alternatives that maybe people are not aware of, of where to live in Africa long term. This is the electric grid. Uh, I looked at this carefully. I probably, you know, one of the problems that that south side of the Congo, this electric line is basically supporting 
all that new development and as well as the Rwanda side. So what actually probably needs to happen, and if you look at the nighttime image, let me just look at the nighttime image really quick. So you can see basically there's a whole chunk of electricity here in Africa. There's definitely a chunk here, and what's not seen here is the side up in Saudi Arabia. It's actually very bright uh, there. So Africa is quite dark, but there's a part down here in Johannesburg that a lot of people don't really realize. That's really the big chunk of electricity in Africa. So there, you can see that all the activity right down here, and actually it's pretty well known in Africa that Cape Town is very wealthy, um, as well as South Africa. Um, and Egypt. So in terms of wealth in Africa, it's primarily North Africa and South Africa. So getting out of the jungle may be wise in terms of wealth as well, uh, because uh, it's just so hard to live in the jungle anyway. But, uh, and then uh, anyway, so, and we're gonna talk about the rules too. And, and, and so you can see right here, this electrical grid kind of starts where the question is in Angola. Uh, and comes into this major city here and pulls out. Now, an interesting proposal would be to actually think about Zambia and Zimbabwe and Mozambique more. So this electric part here, why not get out of the jungle, move into Zambia and Zimbabwe? You have a major lake here uh, that almost seems like an ocean. You can't even see across it in some portions. Um, but this actually provides an alternative because there's not a whole lot of wildlife here to disturb. So they pro provide an excellent opportunity as well as Mozambique and this whole coast right here is also farmable. So it's an interesting thing and there's already a lot of electricity in South Africa. So uh, there's a neighbor that I know that actually lived in Botswana and married a Botswana person and moved back to America. but. Anyway, this whole area is interesting. There's also major mining projects here. So uh, if you looked at this mining map, you can see there's a lot of mining going on right through there as well. So that electricity may also be from the mining companies, uh, but this gets out of the jungle and there's also more wealth here. Um, but a lot of that could, you know, this west coast of Africa could easily turn into Mozambique and Tanzania could actually rival a lot of this so a lot of the population problems here could be moved down into here and even around the, the, the lake victoria rather than moving into these lakes here um, so there is some alternatives and you can see the electric grid basically goes here out to mombasa which is an awesome city and an awesome port as well as here dar al salam so you can see tanzania there's a little point in here Dar es Salaam being an excellent university town um, and some very interesting things. So Ethiopia, basically, and then Djibouti, this is a major internet hub. Pretty much all of the high-speed fiber optic internet that goes into Africa from Asia comes through Djibouti. So the electric issue there is very important as well. So anyway, you can see some details. And here you can see Sudan and the Nile River basically coming up through here and then Sudan being extremely important um, more than a lot of people realize. Now here's looking at the fire map, um, and I don't even understand how important this may be, but these are little fires that people are building in the jungle, and you can start to see uh, essentially what's going on there, and I should probably discuss that in more detail. Here are the major airports in the jungle, and this kept crashing on me on my computer mysteriously. So maybe we shouldn't even look at this, but this is kind of what the problem is. A lot of people fly into the jungle and then fly out, uh, and that causes a very significant problem. So, uh, and I'm sorry for some of these weird images. I can explain them later. So here's the north side of the Congo uh, from the Lagos, Nigeria side. So you can see just how important Lagos is. And actually the problem, this Delta region is heavily populated and it, probably all should be not populated. Essentially what happened is that a lot of people uh, with your passport and international travel being difficult in Africa, uh, because there's so many different countries, uh, essentially people moved out to Abuja. So Abuja actually started causing part of the 
helped, but also created significant problems. If you really study what's going on here, Abuja turns into this, which turns into this, which actually took over the whole delta, which actually should have been a wildlife preserve. This whole area should have been a national park. But as you can see, it's more populated than Lagos, Nigeria itself. And you can see that this all turns in here. And now Cam Cameroon is perhaps one of the most important countries in the world because it's the door to the jungle. Right, this little city, as soon as you get to here, you get to that city, and then you get deep into the jungle. And I didn't even show, this is only the north side, it doesn't show the many millions of cities down further south. But you can start to see where the problem is. People are starting to get in through here, and there's actually a major city right there, and they're actually coming from both sides here. Whereas the original goal for Abuja was to get people over to and from East Africa, which it may be wiser to build a railroad or some kind of transportation structure across the northern part of the jungle so people don't have to depend on essentially going into the jungle. Um, so this is uh, some other areas, and I'm sorry I'm looking at both uh, South America and uh, uh, the jungle here. So, uh, But let me just go through these images really quickly here. Sorry about this. Uh, so again, I'm going to post all the details here. Here is the actual satellite image. It's hard to see the details, but you can kind of get into the farming details on the FAO data. I'll also give you this one here, which is the map that we used to look at the uh, soil map. Uh, and then here's the water basin map. So it gives you the primary basins. So how the country maybe really should be formed is based on these water basins, but it's not that way at all. So, uh, but it helps us understand maybe where some of these wildlife areas, these are essentially the wildlife highways. So if we were to look at the pathways uh, between major wildlife regions, it actually could be defined by these water basin areas. So super important to look at. And then here's the global population situation for Africa. And again, you can see definitely there's this whole uh, northern route here, which actually goes through Sudan. And if you know anything about all the real serious problems, a lot of that has come through Sudan and Ethiopia and through down here because um, it's, it's a very complicated question. So, and you can see how important Nairobi is and then that Dar es Salaam as well as La Unda here and that major city and then the south part here and then the population kind of pulling in here. Um, so, uh, and then there's definitely some interesting other things to talk about. This is the deforestation map um, and then the Earth at Night map for all of Africa as well as the actual um, electrical grid and then the fire map and some other things. And then I definitely wanted to emphasize, take a look at these. This is the uh, species maps uh, for birds as well. You may want to look at that separately um, and think so. Uh, I'll have to pause this for a moment. Uh, I've gone through a lot of details here um, and I hope all of them have been extremely helpful. So let me go back here and scroll through these. Uh, I'll let you see some of these that I've been working on uh, for the Amazon just really quickly, even though this is not an Amazon discussion. Um, I'll do that in a moment, but you can see some of these Amazon discussion uh, points. Uh, I'm still not done uh, looking at that, and I definitely need to <laughs> go through some more details here. Um, but uh, again, I want to look at a couple more details here that I maybe didn't mention. This island here, Zanzibar over on this side, there's no reason, this is one of the wealthiest places in all of Africa, this island. There's no reason why this island can't be as an alternative. This is turned into a mega city down here. Uh, why not move the people out of this city from the jungle and these other cities over to here or even over to here as an alternative um, and even out of this delta onto this island so that you can you can see the little white spots becoming major cities on this delta. These floodplains are very vital for all kinds of habitat. So and it turns out that this is the front door to the jungle right in here is actually a very vital piece and I probably didn't even explain it enough how important that piece is right in here. So, uh, but you can kind of see there's the Congo jungle spinning out here and all these different rivers and the river thing, I think you can see those two lakes uh, kind of hiding in that. And then again, here is the other perspective uh, looking at the overall picture. And again, it doesn't explain the uh, 
farther part of West Africa. And here you can see this part perspective as well as this from this perspective. So, and, and the green part actually you can see is down through here, but the climate is different. And I don't know if I explained that well enough, but anyway, so I'll try to explain it. But, uh, and then the biodiversity stuff, really the water situation, again, I don't know if I explained that enough, but you know, the rivers are where you drink. I drink many times a day, animals drink all the time, every day. The rivers are extremely important as well as the lakes. And essentially what's happened is that all the lakes have been completely blocked um, for wildlife. Uh, either there's farms around the edges or cities and houses and all that. So, uh, but this area right here being extremely important because there's that those three lakes and those three little entrances into here and you can kind of see uh, some more details here and some alternatives that we discussed and then here's those internal lakes and there's actually cities you can see those white areas there's actually cities being built right now right in those places and you can see this here as well um, and again here's the river map uh, I can't emphasize enough the importance each one of these are like each one of these areas are kind of like this is where you go to drink water every single day and when you have a city there you pollute imagine when we drink water i was watching a monkey drink water it just bends over and drinks right out of the water um and i maybe wanted to close on this topic if you're gonna live in the jungle there needs to be some kind of way to necessarily live in the jungle yes but you should probably start thinking about how to live like a monkey you don't have a farm you depend a hundred percent on wild fruits and wild wild nuts and all that kind of wild food so when you start to depend on food that's imported into the jungle maybe you shouldn't be living in the jungle and maybe they should actually allow no imports of food into the jungle and actually that would cause a huge problem because then people start farming more in the jungle so but <laughs> the real truth is that there needs to be less people and actually there should probably be nobody living in the jungle uh, unless you have very strict uh, guidelines. So, and some of that un means understanding the rivers really well. So I really think it all starts with the rivers and ends with the rivers. This whole discussion, we can solve all these problems simply by respecting the animals' rivers and treating these as, as wildlife rivers. Every single one of these rivers need to be extremely respected, especially and what happens is they push the animals all the way up into the end of the river and then there's no water left because it's the start of the river. So basically each one of these areas is extremely important. Here's the overall river map and again I cannot emphasize enough how important this river map is. And then here's the population map again looking at how terrible the problem is, right? So they basically took over all this river and then there's other spots all throughout this here so and you got to realize that a town of many millions of people can pollute the entire end of the river here making it completely undrinkable and with all these little and i've looked into these housing settlements there's thousands and even millions of people that live there's 1.2 billion people that live in africa now there's a lot of people living here so um and again look at the farming situation you can see the actual farming here let me just take a moment to breathe here and see what I have missed. But there's so many details here that you may want to look at yourself. Um, and again, you can see the water situation is actually really complicated. So this whole coast actually gets more rain than the, than the Congo jungle itself, right? And even this part, that's why the Delta region that I was talking about, this is where Lagos is, and this is the Delta. This Delta is very vital. This is actually maybe even more important than jungle, and this is where it's most densely populated. It's basically the front door of the jungle, right? And you can see at a different season, there's another place, there's a whole other side of the jungle here in Madagascar becoming very important. And then here's the deforestation. Let me just see if I missed anything in particular, but you can see these yellow points that are perhaps very important as well as Kampala being extremely important. And let me just recircle Kampala here to make it absolutely certain people understand the importance of Kampala in this discussion. Uh, and here again, you can see the soil maps as alternatives. And this gets into West Africa and you can see the coastline being heavily flooded because of that rain that came in. And actually a lot of that, what I try to do is circle this point so actually it's probably right there that they need to preserve as wildlife but that's all been populated by a major city and even a major country 
right there has that sliver so that, that because there's multiple soil zones here that means there's a lot of different plant life so you can have one type of plant life on this side and another type of plant life this side and a third type here meaning you could also have a variety of wildlife so it's important to look at the national parks in areas and here's the floodplain here you can see i pointed that out and how this floodplain is actually quite a bit different than the actual congo the congo comes through here but it doesn't have the soil diversity that the niger river has and then again here's that island here and then that whole doorway to the jungle kind of here as a as a as a whole region and and there's just so many details uh in all of this so uh, and again if you're interested in electricity uh, and also making money on a lot of these ideas, uh, you may look at helping people move out of the jungle. And real estate is a huge way to make money as well as farming. And you may say, uh, you know, anyway, looking at ways to help people move, you know, to Dar es Salaam or even further down to Mozambique and South Africa, as well as this little city right in here in Angola as an alternative to living right here. Um, helping people move. I worked on a moving company uh, for many years, for about four or five years. It really hurt my back. It's very hard labor, um, but it was super interesting at times. So, and there's alternatives uh, to everywhere. So definitely thinking about that um, can be a way. And then here's the overall electrical grid. And I'm sorry if this is going on and on, I'm gonna try to end this discussion as soon as possible. Um, but these are the major reasons to think about um, I kind of didn't circle this major, uh, this is the actual jungle here, but you can see Kampala here. And actually what's going on here is we need to move people out of even Kampala, bring them down to Dar es Salaam, and even further down the coast, and perhaps even away from the jungle entirely. So Mombasa, uh, which I'll circle here in black, which you can't really see, um, but basically, this becomes a vital coastline and there's actually a lot of wildlife down there as well. So, uh, and then there's the fire map, airport map, and some other details. So, uh, northern part of the jungle, let's just make sure I didn't miss anything. It, there's so many details here. So uh, one thing I really wanted to emphasize is this whole pathway along the north side. And actually a lot of the monkeys live on the north side because they're afraid to even cross the Congo River. So a lot of the monkey, and that's a big debate here, is that you can see that on both sides of the river, the river kind of comes through here, but you're actually getting into the main part of the jungle here. So it's it's actually kind of good because the monkeys, some of them are kind of dangerous animals, to be honest. And uh, they you know the wildlife, there's so many different types of wildlife. Like I said, any one little speck here it can be 1,000 or more different types of just animals, let alone 300 different types of trees, tree species within just 2.5 acres. So you can see that this all spins around here and goes into this city here. And you can see they're actually pulling up through here. And it's just a matter of time. These, these ways are actually bi-directional. And I think I didn't explain it enough here, so I'll just make that clear. Um, so basically, there's a pathway going right in here, and you can see this hot point right here being a major city right smack dab in the middle, and another lake right there with a big city around it as well. So uh, here's South America. That's a whole separate discussion. Uh, Amazon, I'm going to try to get into that as soon as possible um, as well. So, uh, But anyway, so uh, I'll just close on a last couple of discussion points. Um, so uh, we'll just take a whole look at the whole entire earth for a second. Um, but, uh, you know, basically this is the jungle here. This, uh, you know, according to what the, re you know, the artificial intelligence or whatever that I've read, this is the most important jungle. Um, the, uh, partly because uh, there's so much people involved here and there's also uh, monkeys and elephants and larger animals as well as small animals. So uh, the difference between the Amazon is that there's not really the big animals that you have in Africa, as well as the major population questions uh, that Africa is dealing with. Um, but it's a whole different question and we're gonna look at the Amazon as soon as possible here. But uh, basically you can see, uh, and the other thing is this, is that if you're really struggling for money and for food, the truth is that Northern Africa is one of the wealthiest places of Africa and down here is wealthy. So if you're thinking about money, 
and, the, and, and in the long term, probably West Africa is going to be very wealthy, as well as the coastline down here, um, and already Uganda and uh, Zanzibar, like I mentioned here. And there are some new places uh, like this island here off the coast. Uh, there can be some alternatives. Uh, so, uh, you know, I kind of see the future of the jungle being a tourist thing and not really living in the jungle full time. So, I mean, if you are living in the jungle, maybe you should reconsider. You don't necessarily have to completely abandon what you're trying to do, which I think you maybe should consider, uh, particularly in these regions. Um, but keeping it primarily as a place for the animals, right? So if you're living in the jungle, it's not about having a normal house. It's not about living like a normal necessarily. So you really got to reconsider what, uh, your, what your approach is in the jungle. So uh, anyway... So yeah, I'm really sorry to go through all these details uh, and I really hope they've helped out as much as possible. Let me know what kind of questions you got and I'd be glad to help work with you uh, on the details. Thank you so much. And please let me know what I can do to personally try to help you out. Um, I would say that there's a lot of things that we need to look at um, and uh, it's been really fun to try to talk with people and figure out what we can do to uh, help work on solving some of these problems. So uh, I would like to thank you if you are um, working on some of these things um, and just say, uh, you know, I'm definitely hoping the best for you and trying to see what we can do um, to for sure help the wildlife here. Um, I've seen some really awesome videos of people um, you know, taking care of monkeys and all different kinds of animals. Um, and I personally uh, learned a lot uh, from the wildlife and I'd like to really be thankful um, and then uh, re-emphasize uh, just how important that is. Thank you so much. I'll see you later.